it will be a oh, there you go that's it we will be in a brand new year so i don't know if you missed anything before this but uh, anyway uh, happy uh, holidays merry christmas happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa whichever one of those uh, you may be celebrating uh, good to see everybody out there. Uh, I hope that you're checking us out. It's still pretty cold outside, uh, although uh, <clears throat> we are not experiencing what we experienced last week. We talked to you about it beforehand, said Thursday was going to be a pretty raw day, and boy, uh, before it was all said and done, was it. I mean, the temperature dropped like a rock at 40, 50 degrees. Uh, we saw unprecedented low temperatures uh, for the last few days, uh, Thursday night into all day Friday into Saturday as well. And things slowly started to, uh, you know, get a little bit better, you know, on yesterday. So I hope you had a chance to get out and celebrate with family and friends. And I hope Santa was very good to you if that is indeed your thing. We're going to have a good show for you tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about some, uh, some important issues as we end one year and head in uh, to another. Uh, just a few minutes, uh, we are going to be speaking with uh, community activist and executive director of Saving... Absalom. His name is Gerald Trotter. You know him best as the man who has done the TV commercials, Don't Lose Your Head, Use Your Head, man. That is Gerald Trotter. He's done several of those uh, public service announcements, and he'd be the perfect person to talk to uh, about our young people uh, and where things are heading in that direction, and they're not heading in a very good direction, uh, you know, as we uh, end this year. Hopefully things will get better in 23. Uh, I will also be speaking a little bit later on to Reverend Dr. Jonathan McReynolds. He is the senior pastor of Full View Missionary Baptist Church in Bartlett. And we're going to be talking about what seems to be a disconnect, especially between our young people and the church. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks have been having uh, conversations, you know, when we talk about uh, the young folks as young as 14, 15 years old committing major crimes out here. Where's the disconnect? I mean, are they are they going to church with their parents? It used to be back in the day. Uh, it wasn't about uh, uh, it wasn't about, uh, you know, whether you wanted to go. It was on a Sunday morning. You got up, you got dressed and you got out. So uh, everything else is, um, uh, you know, it's, things have changed. That perspective has changed. Absolutely. And we're going to talk with him about that. And, uh, you know, since we have seen weather that uh, we have really need to see, not seen from the extreme perspective, and this is all over the country, by the way, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about weather. I used to do this back in the day, but I wanted to bring on somebody who actually knows what he's talking about, and he's actually a familiar face to those who have lived in Memphis and Shelby County for a while or when he was here, meteorologist Austin Onick. Y'all remember Austin from Channel 3, News Channel 3? He was the weekend guy uh, for, for many, many years here. He is now the chief meteorologist at WDAF-TV in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he's going to join me to talk a little bit about what he knows best, which is uh, weather and kind of how things, um, you know, how, how things look in terms of the forecasting once we get into the new year. Let us not forget, uh, while we have seen a very, very big, powerful, and major storm, uh, that uh, this is just December, okay? We still got a couple, three months to go uh, for winter. So I'm pretty sure we'll probably be seeing some days like this as well. Uh, before we get into it, uh, I want to uh, extend a special prayer to the folks in Buffalo, New York, who are really, really going through it. I mean, they have had about 46, 47 inches of snow uh, in the last couple of days. 27 people have died uh, in, that, uh, in that town because of that as well. So please, uh, for all the folks who are out there who are dealing with some very uh, difficult issues, uh, we extend our prayers and you all extend your prayers to them as well. Uh, so you have the guest list. And, uh, you know, as we do at the top of the show, we always like to honor those, you, who are celebrating a birthday or a special day or a special event, um, whether it be this past weekend, uh, Christmas Day, or this day as well, or maybe this week. Uh, we do this little shout out thing across the country called, uh, you know, we, we shout you out. Uh, but I can't do that until I say, hit it, Bryn. Happy birthday, happy birthday on this day going out too. Nancy Edwards celebrating today. Happy birthday, Lisa Moore, to Greg Jones, to Kevin Moore, Cynthia Burgess Dotson celebrating today, as is Kimberly Newsom, 
Willie Jordan celebrating his birthday today. Willie Jordan Jr. rather. Percy P. Sidney celebrating today. Pamela Coleman. And uh, to top off the list, unless, of course, Lola has somebody. Myron Lowry, former city councilman, former mayor of our city, celebrating his birthday today. So to each and every one of you, from all of us here at the Real Talk Memphis Gang, Lola, you got a birthday? Lola's got a birthday, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, happy birthday. Well, well, turn the music down just a little bit so we can hear you. Hear me now? Yeah, got you. Happy birthday to my Uncle Larry on tomorrow. Uncle Larry? Yes. On tomorrow. Happy birthday, Uncle Larry, on tomorrow. So, uh, in saying that, uh, we congratulate you for making another trip around the sun, and we hope we'll be here next year to celebrate your birthday and your next trip around the sun. Congratulations and enjoy. Thank you, Brent. All right, so uh, I want to dive into a couple of news and notes before we uh, get into the broadcast. Uh, I don't know how many of you, well, unless you're, if you're my age, you hadn't heard of him, but uh, a young rapper uh, in this city died a few days ago. His name is Big Scar. Uh, he was only 22 years old. Uh, he was signed uh, by the Gucci Mane. Uh, he was on his uh, record label. Uh, he died of an accidental overdose of some prescription uh, drugs. So uh, again, uh, very sad, tragic news there. He's only 22 years of age. Big scar. Uh, so in news and notes, of course, the big story is the weather. And uh, MLGW has been uh, offering us weather updates uh, every few hours. Uh, you know, initially when all this started, the mayor uh, announced the state of emergency. And I don't know how long, I don't know how long it's been since that's happened in the city either. Uh, but he did declare a state of emergency. Uh, right now, we're dealing with water issues. I know that's all you're talking about. Many people uh, either have extraordinarily low water pressure or no water at all at this time. So we're trying to get all that worked out. You know, obviously, uh, water mains have burst all over the city. And uh, I believe uh, at last check, uh, there was maybe three uh, more that had to be fixed. But, you know, once you start fixing these things, you're going to run into more problems. Uh, the forecast is for uh, maybe the next three to four days, maybe five days, uh, when they will drop the boil water advisory. And that is in effect right now uh, throughout most of Shelby County. The boil water advisory, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can bathe in it and do other things in it, but, but in terms of, uh, you know, the drinking the tap water, that's not a good advice. That's not, that's not advised. And uh, you also need to boil your water for a few minutes uh, for any impurities. Now, it's important to note that when the water is fixed and the pressure is fixed and these pipes are fixed, it may take a minute for you to have to, you know, be able to use that because, you know, they have to go through some testing. They have to make sure that everything is all right and the water is purified and, and, it, and it is ready to drink before that happens. But I'm sure uh, that uh, Doug McGowan and the folks over at MLGW will uh, give you uh, all of the information you need uh, in, in terms of all of this. My only issue with this uh, has been uh, the rolling blackouts, which, by the way, have never been seen here uh, in the city's history, from what I'm to understand. And it was just a timing issue. TVA uh, sets these things in motion, uh, and apparently the communication effort between them and MLGW was not great. Uh, we have very short notice, and when you're talking about over a million people, you really must come up with a better way uh, to be able to announce something as serious uh, as rolling blackouts. A lot of people I know uh, went through that for anywhere from up to 30 minutes to an hour to maybe a little longer than that. Uh, and uh, you couldn't separate that from MLG issues uh, because, you know, they autonomously turned off a specific area. And at one time you had 40, 50, 60,000 people without power for like an hour in this town. So um, it may have been needed to try to conserve energy, but it was executed very, very poorly. And that may be something uh, that folks will be looking at down the road. Uh, did have one uh, particular thing I wanted to mention uh, that happened a couple of days ago, uh, even in the cold. Uh, one couple's plan to lure a drug dealer into a robbery, uh, you know, ended with a man dead and his girlfriend facing charges. Basically, uh, uh, a male and a female uh, spoke to someone they knew who was a drug dealer uh, and said that they wanted to do a legitimate drug deal. So they met up at a specific location. 
They lured the man out, and when they pulled up to the house, uh, you know, the, the, the woman's boyfriend pulled the gun, and someone who was inside the dealer's vehicle fired several shots, one of those shots striking the woman's boyfriend. Uh, he was pronounced dead on the scene. Uh, she now faces a series of crimes. Uh, she was booked into the jail on Friday and has held uh, two bonds totaling $85,000, uh, booked on a lot of charges as well. 18 years old. She's still a teenager, by the way, 18 years old. So uh, that, is, uh, that is something that, uh, you know, once again, we have to talk about with sad and tragic consequences on the back end. Holiday travel nightmares. There are a lot of people who are traveling and trying to get uh, either to someplace or back from someplace. Southwest Airlines seems to be the one that is really causing the kink, uh, chink in the armor. They had to cancel 65% of their flights today alone uh, because of the blizzard conditions and airports and cities all across the country. Uh, 65% of their, of their flights, that's over 6,500 plus flights that were canceled today. So people are sleeping in airports all over the country, you know, can't get home, don't know when they're going to be able to get home. That's a very, very, very tough uh, situation, uh, you know, as well. So, uh, you know, we've been talking about this, uh, you know, weather's getting really, really cold and it is uh, flu season and it is uh, R RSV season. Now, I will tell you, RSV, which is the respiratory issue for young people, uh, has uh, kind of quieted down just a bit, thank goodness. And even uh, even the flu uh, is almost uh, coming to a crescendo as well uh, in terms of uh, the number of cases. But COVID numbers are starting to rise once again. And if you have not gotten your booster, it might be a good idea for you to get that just in case because you never know where you're going. People are not wearing masks. Nobody's protecting themselves. Very few people are protecting themselves, I should just say. Uh, but uh, it is, uh, it's tough out here, okay? And I want you to be well, and I want you to be healthy and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, that's news and notes. Uh, by the way, the Memphis Tigers football team plays tomorrow afternoon uh, in a bowl game, and uh, it starts at 2.15, uh, and uh, so if you're off this week, so you either took off last week, came back for this week, and, or you took off this week, which is a lot of people do, uh, and uh, back next uh, Tuesday. Uh, the, the traffic is very light out there right now. Let's let me know that a lot of folks are out. So what I'm hoping right now is that uh, you're, you know, if you're at home, it's still chilly outside. If you're at home and you're just hanging out, uh, hang out with us uh, here at uh, Real Talk Memphis. We have a good show for you tonight. I, I hope to see some folks on Facebook Live if I can find it during the commercial break. Speaking of, we're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to kick things off with Mr. Gerald Trotter. This is Real Talk Memphis uh, for a chilly Monday evening. I am Chip. You know who you are. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest? or have a guest idea, then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR is supported by the Orpheum Theater, presenting Mannheim Steamroller Christmas by Chip Davis on Thursday, December 29th. The spirit of the season comes alive with the sound of Mannheim Steamroller, a holiday tradition for over 35 years. More information at orpheum-memphis.com. WYXR is supported by Shell Days Music Festival, presented by Mentho, April 21st and 22nd at Overton Park Shell. Shell Days will feature two days of music with Trampled by Turtles, Southern Avenue, Leftover Salmon, Neil Francis, Paul Thorne, and Bailey Bigger. More information at menthopresents.com. Music. 
WYXR is supported by GPAC, presenting Australian guitarist Tommy Emmanuel on Friday, January 13th. Tommy Emmanuel is known for his fingerstyle technique, live performances, and use of percussive effects on the guitar. More information at gpacweb.com. Support for WYXR comes from Farm Burger. Farm Burger is your neighborhood grass-fed burger joint located in the East Atrium of Crosstown Concourse, offering custom grass-fed burgers, seasonal salads, and more. Farm Burger takes pride in their grass-fed beef and partners with local farmers such as Home Place Pastures, Bonnie Blue Farm, and Marmaloo Farms. For more information, visit farmburger.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this uh, Monday evening in the city. Uh, the last Monday in 2022. Uh, glad to have you with us and glad to have our first guest with us. He's been on with us before. He's a very familiar face and voice uh, in our community. And I do call him a community activist because uh, he has gone uh, uh, quite a, he's gone out of his way quite a bit to make sure that our young people understand the perils of uh, making bad choices. Uh, and he's very well known for the uh, PSA commercials uh, that he has done. He's also the executive director of Saving uh, Absalom. Please welcome to Real Talk Memphis again, Gerald Trotter. And Gerald, it's good to see you, man. It's good to be here, Skip, man. Thanks for having me. That's okay. I even forgot you. For, I even forgive you for calling me Skip. You forgot to. What see did I call you, Skip? I'm my bad, brother. My bad. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. It's good to be here, man. It's good to be here, brother. It's good to be. It's good to see you. So. Uh, you know, I wanted to get you on the show, especially as we were wrapping up this year, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what has really been troubling in our city, uh, which is the escalation of crime. Uh, and all of us are feeling that, the feeling the effects of it. But more importantly, our young people, I mean, we're seeing we're, uh, there's something has happened uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the number of crimes uh, that are uh, affecting us that are being perpetrated by young folks. And I'm talking about teenagers, man, 15, 16 years old and up. And I wanted to, to get your take on it. I know you're very involved with the youth in our city and our communities. A kind of, 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 of what you see, you know, out here in the streets today and, 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 and what thoughts uh, does it promote inside you? Well, you know, I, um, what my nonprofit does is go around and talk to all the 10th through 12th graders in the uh, Chevy County school system. Okay. So I get a chance to meet these guys, you know, uh, actually I speak to the boys, the boys. So I get a chance to meet these guys, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, talk to them, see what's making them click. Um, same old stories, same old stories. The teenage angst is brought on by the frustration of not being able to answer a call. And we're all given a call when we're young men. And that call is to become a man, do all the things you're supposed to do as a man in this world, and you know, and put the race on your shoulders. That's the call you get. Problem is, when the when the boys don't have a mentor to help them meet that job, help them be ready for that job. Imagine if you were supposed to show up for work one day and you had no idea what you were supposed to do for that job how much anxiety and frustration that would bring on you. Uh -huh. So you have that and you have just faulty and toxic definitions of what manhood is, you know, so they get with their friends and they come up with their own definitions of manhood. Uh, they listen to rap music. They listen, you know, they watch videos, play games, these violent games and everything else. And they think in their head that they're understanding what manhood is because that's all that's left for them. If you listen to rap music, it, if you didn't know any better, they sound like the instructions to manhood, hmm. and they most definitely are not. Well, Gerald, uh, having said that, uh, 
How do we reach them? I know you're, you're out there, your organization is out there dedicated uh, to communicating with us, a lot of these young men. Uh, but, but I mean, how do, we, how do we really reach what seems to be a major gap in, in uh, you know, the structure of how things should be today? And these young kids out here, you know, running the streets all night long, um, no parental supervision, no anything. And then generally speaking, a lot of uh, that turns into a very tragic situation. I mean, so how do we, how do you connect with them or try to connect with them when you're having conversations with these young folks about the choices that they're making? I try to get them to understand that life is finite. You know, this isn't a game. You don't get a, you don't get three goals at this. When someone's life is taken, that is it. And it's over. And they don't realize that until it happens right out in front of them. One thing I tend to do with these kids and I'm most proud of is that they, they, they know the commercial that says don't lose your head, but use your head. Right. Thing is, no one's giving them instructions what using their head is. So when I talk to them, I try to get them to think about what they're thinking about. I explain to them that every thought of theirs comes from a belief. And that belief they have is what directs all of their actions. Mm. So I try to get them to understand what they're thinking about on a daily basis. Doesn't matter the thoughts as simple, as simple as they could be or as complex as they could be, they are directing your emotions. I tell you, I tell them all the time, you tie your shoes so you won't trip up. You don't walk out in front of the, you know, you walk on the expressway because you don't want to get hit by a car. You don't touch the stove because you think it's hot. So the things that you're doing are going to be directed from what your beliefs are and what your thoughts are. So we, I try to work with them on deconstructing toxic beliefs and thoughts. Mm. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Gerald Trotter. Of course, uh, many of you are familiar with uh, him. He's a community activist. He really uh, goes deep with our young folks out here. He's also the executive director uh, of Saving uh, Absalom. How did you how did you decide uh, to to uh, form this particular organization, Gerald? Well, um, when I was in prison, I um, realized my issues with my temper, and I and I you know and I was kind of reading any and everything I get my hands on in that man. So I, I ran across especially about psychiatry and psychologists. So I ran across this technique, not a technique, but um, a, a, a sort of therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. And I tried it on myself while I was in there. And I also tried it on a few of my, you know, fellow, you know, convicts in there. And it seemed to be really, really effective that when, once you start thinking about what you think about, it becomes addictive and you always think about what you're thinking about. And if you're thinking about what you're thinking about, you're not going to do dumb stuff. It's almost impossible to do bad and stupid and toxic things if you're thinking about what you're thinking about. We just don't have a habit of thinking about what we think about. I know it sounds like a tongue twister, but it, it's actually, I get it. you know, actually very effective with uh, the people. So what I did was I learned it then. And when I got out, I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something that would wake the kids up. I would see them come in there um, all still kind of hyped up on who they thought they were, all still kind of um, in an old delusion of an old past life and not really realizing what's smacking them in the face until it smacks them in the face. Mm -hmm. And so I started making those commercials and try to smack them in the face while they're out here. Yeah. So basically the answer to your question is I saving Absalom is about grabbing them by the collar and smacking them in the face while they're out here before they get in there and ruin their lives. Get some attention. That's exactly what we need uh, in, in this society. You know, man. Yeah, you know, I, I am. I'm. I'm very happy the, that uh, you know you're available to come on the show because you're a voice, and and you're someone that 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 people look up to. These young folks need a voice like yours. It sounds like you're giving them real truth. You're not sugarcoating anything. You're telling them, look, life no. is real. Life is tough, and life is full of choices that you need to make. Yes. You know. Yes. I was uh, giving some real talk to some kids out at White Haven about two months ago, got a little trouble out there because one of the parents didn't like the language that was being used um, as far as talking about how some people, some men actually do get raped in prison. Mm. And I don't know what you want me to tell the kids or how you expect me to 
make them afraid of going to jail except for tell them exactly what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The denial of parents causes more um, destruction and more costs us more lives than we realize. Wow. Wow. You're 100 percent right about that. Listen, man, I'm, I'm up against the clockwise, but I, I'm really I'm really happy that you took some time tonight to to talk to us. There is hope. There, there, there is hope. We, we just there need is. to we just need to make sure that they understand that uh, the consequences of the choices that you make can be very serious out here. Yes, sir. And it sounds like that's the organization the theme of what you're trying to do. Gerald Trotter, uh, executive director of Saving Absalom and a community activist that you all know and recognize. Thank you for coming on Real Talk, man. I really appreciate you and happy new thank year. You, thank you for having me, brother. Thank you for having me. Keep doing what you're doing. We need you out here. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Stay care. All righty. Gerald Trotter, ladies and gentlemen, very uh, powerful segment. A uh, man is saying, look, uh, you know what, young folks, uh, you have choices to make out here, and we try to under- make you understand that there are consequences to turning the wrong way. Really appreciate Gerald for coming on the show. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to uh, take it to the church house. Uh, we're going to talk with uh, Reverend Dr. Jonathan McReynolds of Fullview Missionary Baptist Church and get his take on uh, the disconnect uh, that we see with our young people and how we can save them and also how we can uh, turn this cycle around to being something positive. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip Washington. You know who you are. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR is supported by Minglewood Hall, presenting Mo on Saturday, March 11th. For three decades, Mo has been known for their musical synergy, showmanship, and song crafting. More information at MinglewoodHallMemphis.com. Music meets you wherever you are. A great record finds you, and the trick it pulls off is that it records you. The music always remembers who you were when it first hit you, and for the rest of your natural born life, wherever you go, music can take you back to whoever you were. At Loaded for Bear, the way we approach art and brand design is to find our clients wherever they really are, meet them there, and create lasting work that captures who they are. Just like y'all, we're from Memphis and we're listeners. Loaded for Bear is proud to ride for WYXR and Community Radio anywhere. This is Clark Ward Keys, co-founder at Crosstown Brewing Company. We are proud to be WYXR's official beer sponsor for 2022. Memphis music deserves Memphis beer. Working with the WYXR team has been an awesome way to support local community radio and foster a deeper connection with music while doing it. Our Instagram and Facebook pages feature all the updates regarding CBC and WYXR's frequent collaborations. Enjoy following along. Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening, the last Monday of 2022. Very happy to have you with us. Uh, I am Chip Washington, your host. And, uh, uh, you know, as we wrap up this year, you know, our thoughts generally start to turn to what's next. Uh, You know, we're about to turn the page on, on another year. You know, many of you do the resolution thing, you know, your plans and and some things that you want to kind of, you know, do differently, maybe want to do differently next year. Well, you know, one of the things that we have been dealing with as a city and as a community as a whole, you know, you know, is the violence 
uh, perpetrated by our young people in this city. It just seems like it, we're not picking on them because these are actually real cases. And so I always have a, I have a rather inquisitive mind, and and I always want to know what the root problem is in terms of this. So I thought I would uh, bring a man on who uh, I'm getting to know quite well. He is my pastor uh, at uh, Full View Missionary Baptist Church, uh, senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Jonathan McReynolds joins us now, and uh, uh, Pastor Mac, it is good to see you, and it's good for you to, this is good to have you on the show. This is the first time you've been on Real Talk, Memphis. I'm happy to have you. I'm glad to be on Real Talk on 91.7. I'm excited about the opportunity and glad to be here on a major platform in the city. Well, I appreciate that. So, you know, you and I were talking offline, and, you know, I, I just thought it might be worth a conversation really to talk about, because people are starting to to talk about the disconnect between, the, you know, the, uh, our families, our family units, and in particular our children, you know, as pertains to not only our parents, but but people want to bring up the church. Uh, and, you know, I know you are a big-time advocate, a huge advocate, as a matter of fact, for young folks, uh, you know, being a part, you know, of the church family. Is there a disconnect that you see? You know, you, you've been doing this for a very long time, and uh, you, you sort of see the bigger picture. So, so what's your take on... On, on where we are with our young people in reference to the church? I think it's a huge disconnect. Uh, Chip, I started in ministry when I was 19 years old. I'm 51 now, and I've seen a evolution take place in the church and with young people as, as I've aged from a young adult to a, a middle-aged person myself. And I think a lot of that disconnect is we have failed to be real with our young people and, and to maintain relevancy. Uh, we want to talk about Jesus saves, and yes, he does save. But in in context with that, we have to be willing to talk about real everyday issues that are impacting the lives of our young people. And I think that that lack of uh, relevancy, lack of transparency has caused uh, a major disconnect between the generations of young people and the church. We have to talk about real issues, life sexuality, poverty, social justice issues, and the church's uh, willingness to remain silent and irrelevant, and I'm gonna say irrelevant more so than silent, mm. I, has lended to that large disconnect between the generations. Pastor Mac, you know, uh, I wanna kinda, kinda, kinda dig into that a little bit because I, I believe that there is, you know, something serious. You know, when you and I were coming up, uh, there was no choice about going to church. I mean, you got up on Sunday morning, you got dressed, you knew where you were going, right. you knew where you were going to be. These days, first of all, you know, kids are kids are given cho- given choices. Uh, but but do you sense that there is a, a lack of attendance when it comes to young people, and that parents maybe are not pushing that envelope, uh, you know, deep enough to say, look, th- th- I mean, look, I mean, you need to learn something here. And, and uh, you know, if, if you go and understand God's teachings, you know, it might help you a bit. What, what, what's your take on all of that? Absolutely, Chip, because we're dealing now with a generation of parents that are the first generation of parents that were not raised up in the church. Mm. As you said, we, we were forced to go to church and sometimes multiple times on a Sunday. Yeah. And now we, we find, we're finding ourselves dealing with a generation of parents in their 20s, 30s, maybe even early 40s that are part of that first generation that was not forced to come to church. It doesn't know what Sunday school is, BTU, uh, doesn't understand the moral compass and foundation that was given to the generations before. So now you have children and families that look at church as an option and as a choice, and certain things are not being imparted into their lives. And I think we're seeing that manifested in these younger generations. Do, uh, do, does the church p- play a role in that uh, absence because maybe it hasn't been emphasized enough, uh, you know, uh, you know, across the city here or, uh, you know, across the region? I mean, may, is there some is there something, you know, from 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 your perspective, you know, as 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 the shepherd of the church uh, that maybe, you know, some of uh, some of the pastors aren't emphasizing enough um, that having our children in attendance is extraordinarily important these days? I think the liability goes across the board. I'm not gonna put it on pastors and colleagues, but I will say, going back to one th- thing I said several months ago, is I think after coming after coming out of segregation, 
church became an option for many in black America. And I think when many of us got black flight from the church, we lost something in our culture and our communities across the nation uh, because we lost that moral foundation, that moral conviction. And I think also the church failed to maintain relevancy as conditions change with generations uh, coming out of the civil rights movement, going into the black, black power generations, going into my generation. Uh, the church failed to talk the social language that these emerging generations talk. And then even, I would say up until now, dealing with George Floyd, social injustice issues, there have been many church voices and church movements that have been slow to respond and to jump into matters that are of importance to the younger generation. So you, having said that, you're saying really this is a, <clears throat> this is a bigger picture. This is a much broader picture uh, that needs to be painted uh, because of some of the things that we've seen and uh, some of the lessons that we need to learn from that. Uh, you know, from our from our church leaders, as you said, this is not it's not us picking on anybody in particular. I mean, this is a this is a problem for all of us. I mean, community is important. I know every single week how important it is for you, uh, in particular with our young folks. Uh, you know, to get them involved, to get them engaged, to get them to understand uh, their responsibility. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, and I think that starts with going to young people. You can't just wait for young adults and young people to come into the doors of the church, but you have to meet them where they are. You have to find out what their issues are of importance in their life. Get their perspective of church, of God, of, of where, where you need to meet them at rather than trying to just open the doors and expect them to run into the church. Mm -hmm. That is sometimes not always been friendly to, to young people and families. So I think it's, the church has to take a position of going outside of the four walls, meeting young people where they are on the streets, coffee shops, nightclubs, wherever, but also existentially meeting them where they are mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And I think that's that's the greater thing, is that we have to show young people that, they, that we care about them. Yeah. And my experience has been when I show them that I care about them and I'm willing to listen to them and show concern about them, They'll get on the they get on the train with me, and we'll ride this thing out together. You have two sons, and uh, you often talk about how uh, one of the biggest keys uh, in terms of your life uh, and what you're trying to expound to others is uh, sometimes we have to we have to close our mouths and listen. Uh, but one of the biggest components is just having a conversation, talking to them, as you just mm -hmm. said, finding out what's on their mind. And I think you know I think when you do that. It has a multifaceted effect. Do you think so? Am I, am I right in that? Yeah. Absolutely. Because if you just look at what, what, what we're doing in the context of Full View Baptist Church, I didn't come into the church telling the young adults and young people what I'm going to do. Right. I spent six months calling them in and sitting down and talking with them and listening to them, uh, listening to them talk about their vision of church, their experience with church, their joys, their hurts with church. And so I think when you listen to people, and you show that you care about their journey, then you build synergy and collaboration with them of where now you can work together and move forward. You are planning uh, to, to launch a, a school uh, within the uh, walls of uh, Full View Missionary Baptist Church. Talk a little bit about your, your plans for that. Sure. What we're trying to do this year, what we are going to do in this upcoming year, is launch the Full View Carter G. Woodson Academy which is going to be an academic academy that's going to start out in its genesis as just giving support, uh, academic support to young people, whether it's tutoring, uh, academic enrichment. But the long-term goal is to have this to be possibly a Christian school or a full-fledged academic program that mentors and uh, empowers young people from middle school to high school in the areas of literacy, mathematics, which is key, history, cultural things, and also helping them prepare for college, the military, vocational skills. And I think the church has to play a critical role of filling those gaps that our children and families are facing out here in the community and in the public school systems. I was going to, I was going to ask you, uh, you know, a, a final question in reference to that. Uh, we do need more uh, uh, places like this uh, for, for children, again, 
Uh, this is a, this is this is uh, endemic to them. This is this is a focus on them. And what you just said is how you lay the groundwork for all of this. You know, initially to build up to to other things uh, to be a school. That's extraordinarily important. Would you like to see other churches around the country uh, pick up on 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 an idea like this? Absolutely. I think the church historically, when we look at the history of Black America, the church has played a critical role in the education of Black America. And that's the foundation of which I'm approaching this academy. Uh, one of my mentors and professors at Harvard Divinity School, Dr. Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham, wrote a book that dealt with how the Black church, the, particularly the Black Baptist church, played a critical role in starting many HBCUs, uh, filling social educational gaps in our community. And I think churches across our country, across our city and community, have to step in and fill those, those gaps and fulfill those roles. Reverend Dr. and our pastor, uh, Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan McReynolds, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Mac, for coming on the show and, and laying out your vision for 2023. I know that it is going to be an exciting time you know, for all of us, and uh, you, know, you have a, a goal and a mission, and uh, we really appreciate you taking time to come on tonight. Thank you for having us, and I encourage everybody to take a new look at an old friend in full view. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Reverend Dr. Jonathan McReynolds, thank you so much. And um, when we come back, we're going to we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about, you know, what we just experienced around here, which is some extraordinarily uh, uh, rough weather for many of us in this country. Buffalo, New York is going through it right now, as we talked about earlier this morning, 40 something inches plus of snow, which is where uh, Pastor McReynolds came from, as a matter of fact. Uh, 27, 28 people dead so far. We're, we're, we're sending our prayers to those folks, uh, most definitely in Buffalo and other places in this country. So we're going to talk a little bit about weather, and I'm going to bring back an old familiar face. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip on this Monday evening. We'll take a quick break and be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. This is Will Goodwin, co-founder at Crosstown Brewing Company. Just like WYXR, Crosstown Brewing supports Memphis music and our neighbors who use their talents to make it. Our beers can be found at our 3,000 square foot tap room right here at the Crosstown Concourse and at your favorite bars, restaurants, and stores throughout Tennessee, Mississippi, and Eastern Arkansas. Enjoy. WYXR supported by GPAC, presenting Australian guitarist Tommy Emmanuel on Friday, January 13th. Tommy Emmanuel is known for his fingerstyle technique, live performances, and use of percussive effects on the guitar. More information at gpacweb.com. WYXR is supported by Minglewood Hall, presenting Mo on Saturday, March 11th. For three decades, Mo has been known for their musical synergy, showmanship, and song crafting. More information at minglewoodhallmemphis.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening in the city, the last Monday of 2022 when we rejoin you again it'll be a brand new year and hopefully it'll be a brand new you uh as i alluded to before the break we had a storm blow through here that the likes of which we have 
uh, haven't seen ever, or maybe for a lot of you long timers around here, old timers around here, maybe you saw something back way, way, way back when. But I mean, with wind chills uh, in the in the in the single and double digits uh, for the last couple of days, uh, and the snow and the whole nine yards, it was quite the blast from west to east. So I decided to reach back and reach out to a to uh, someone I consider a friend and someone you all consider a friend as well. He has. Uh, Used to be our uh, weekend meteorologist around here on uh, News Channel 3 for a very long time, a couple of decades at least. Uh, he is now the chief meteorologist at WDAF-TV in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He is Austin Onik. And Austin, uh, great to see you, my friend. How you doing? Doing well, sir. Good to hear from you again. Absolutely that. So you're down there in Chattanooga and uh, kind of running the show there. Uh, how's it been? How's the experience been so far? It's been excellent. Uh, the people here are wonderful, have a lot of creative opportunities. We've got, uh, it's, it's a small station. It's not what I was used to in Memphis, but they do a great job with what they have. Uh, the place is excellent. It's it's not Memphis, but what is. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful experience so far in the last six months. So I'm looking forward to uh, the rest of my time here. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I know a lot of folks miss you around here. I mean, you were one of my favorite, you know, where the, where the folks when you were here as well. Uh, but um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, this storm uh, from your perspective uh, in terms of its intensity. And it's, it's still moving through pretty hard, especially in the Northeast right now. Um, but maybe kind of uh, because you're a scientist and you really get into studying all this kind of stuff, uh, what, what do you what what do you see uh, as we're moving forward? You know, we have to keep remembering this is really the beginning of winter. I mean, we still have a few months left. So, uh, you know, what what does it look like as we're turning the page into another year from your perspective? Well, uh, short term, in the next several days, we're going to be looking for the potential of uh, warmer weather coming through. I know everybody's saying thank heavens for that. Yes, because indeed. After that last cold burst, we were uh, shivering out there for a while, and it's nice to get back to normal conditions. Uh, the Climate Prediction Center, which does the long, short, medium, and long-term lookouts for weather and what we're going to be expecting, is showing in the next about six to ten days warmer conditions but also a lot more chances for rainfall coming on through and then through about uh, the first couple weeks of January temperatures according to what the CPC says is going to be on the mild side and then chances of rainfall remain above normal so we can see kind of a wet and warm start to the new year Uh, beyond that we start getting into more uncertainty so it's difficult to say beyond what we may see we have general guidance to about three months, six months, somewhere in there, but that's about as good as it gets. Does uh, the storm that that, that just uh, passed that we all ex- experienced? Have you it, you've been doing weather for a long time? Have you ever seen anything or experienced anything like like, like this uh, the, with this kind of intensity? The last time we had anything in Memphis was, if I recall correctly, it was 2016, 2017, somewhere in there, and the wind chills dropped like a rock they were in the negative digits. I remember that much. I cannot remember if they went to double digits negative on the wind chill, but it was doggone cold for a couple of days in and around that area. Uh, The benchmark winter storm for the area is that ice storm back in 94. Everybody remembers 1994 from around here. Yeah, that's the one thing right there. When you're talking about the, the Memphis storm of the century, that's the storm that everybody really remembers but we didn't get too much in the way of ice or snow out of this some yes but not a lot yeah and and uh, you know of course uh, you know when you have <clears throat> temperatures this extreme uh, you're going to have some negative uh, ramifications from that like now water pipes are bursting all over the city and uh, that's causing a big problem uh, i don't know that uh, we've ever seen uh, these rolling blackouts have you have you ever experienced that in all your time down here Never. Uh, that's that's something right there that says that we really need to rethink how we get our power, uh, how how the power is managed, that we cannot rely on just one or two power sources of power. We really need to think about renewable energy for not only a wide scale, whether it's solar or wind or tidal power, but we really need to think about what goes on for the individual at home versus what's going on from just relying on nuclear or coal in that area. So there has to be some big changes made on that. 
this uh, the way it was done uh, was to uh, to me uh, about as bad as it could get in terms of the of the de- timing and the dissemination of information to almost a million people, you know, in this city alone who were affected by all of this. Uh, and and it really showed you know, something about TVA too that that maybe showed a light on it that maybe we had never really seen before in terms of of of, of their readiness for a situation like this, not only here but but through the entire state. I had friends of mine over in Germantown and Collierville who had notices from TV or from uh, MLGW that their bill was going to be due in a few days, but they never got word one about rolling blackouts unless they went to social media. And that was released from the news outlets in and around the mid South to give people the information that there might be rolling blackouts. So anything directly from uh, the power companies and utilities, seem to be pretty lacking this time around based on what I've heard. If you're just joining us, uh, we're spending a couple of minutes with Austin Onik, an old friend from uh, the Memphis area of the weather uh, over at uh, his previous station, News Channel 3 here. He is now the chief meteorologist at WDAF-TV in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee. Uh, have we, ha, are we doing a good job? And I say we just as a, as a, as a media, you know, as in, an area covering media, and dissemination of information, are we doing a good enough job, you know, when these storms come, uh, you know, or, or before they come, uh, in really providing the type of information uh, that residents need uh, in a timely manner in order to prepare, in your opinion, as a, as a seasoned weathercaster? There is a lot of motion in the National Weather Service community to simplify the watches and warnings where it comes to winter weather so that you don't have winter storm watch, winter storm warning, freezing rain advisory, winter weather advisory, wind chill, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have a, it's gonna be a simplification going on and the National Weather Service has been taking the public's opinion on that to say, what would you like us to be saying when it comes to watches and warnings like that? Are we doing enough now? Yes, I think so. And somebody who has been accused of quote unquote, hyping the weather over the years, uh, (laughs) stating the facts and getting the information out there. That's not hyping the weather. That's just giving people what they need to be safe. That's it. And that's all. That's it. And that's all. Well, listen, Austin, man, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're doing well down there. And uh, I want to wish you and your family a happy new year. Give Melissa a hello from me. And, uh, you know, you all stay safe down there. Uh, And I will be reaching out to you sometime in 2023. Sounds good. It was pleasant. It was a pleasure working with you at the CRU. Uh, glad to be back with you again today. Glad to see you're doing okay, and I'll be looking forward to the next time. Thanks, man. You take care. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. Austin Audic, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he knows his stuff in terms of the weather for sure. Chief meteorologist at WDAF TV and uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. So before I get out of here, uh, I want to acknowledge a couple of things. You know, this is the last week, as I said, of 2022. It's it's been a it's been a it's been a challenging year in some ways, but but it's also been a, a very good year. And uh, you know, we've done uh, very well on our show. I want to thank uh, Lola and Nicole and and now Bryn, who's the newest part of, a member of our team. Uh, for being here and helping us out. Uh, this, this, you know, people think that you do this and it's, and it's relatively simple, but it's not necessarily, it, it takes a little work to put the show together in terms of doing the research and finding the guests and talking a little bit about what they do here and there and there and here. But I wanted to make sure that I, that I, that I thank them. And also uh, very happy that my daughter, Brianne Nicole, is here with us. She's actually sitting in studio right now with us. And uh, she decided to come out here and spend Christmas with us and, <laughs> she left Los Angeles. It was like 80 degrees. It was 84 degrees on Christmas Day out there uh, to come here to the frozen tundra of Memphis, Tennessee. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud dad. I'm very proud of my daughter and uh, all of her accomplishments and everything that she's done and is doing uh, out there. Uh, you know, she works at Netflix out there and uh, doing very, very well and very, very proud of her. And, of course, very happy to see her. Uh, for this Christmas holiday. I know she'll have a great year. Uh, As for all of you, uh, I just want to say thank you for making 2022 a a good year for us. And as Bryn plays this out, uh, I'm just really grateful for those of you who uh, have supported the show. Uh, And uh, all I can say to you is, while I appreciate what you're doing, and I appreciate your efforts, and I see Michael Harris is online tonight, Audrey's online, Buddy Smith is joining us tonight. 
Uh, and I really appreciate you you doing this. And all I would ask is that you would continue to tell folks about what we're doing here uh, on Real Talk Memphis. This is, uh, you know, really, I'm, I'm really dedicated to this show. I really am. And uh, we pray that uh, 2023 will even be a bigger year, a better year. And, uh, you know, the things that we do around here will make a difference, uh, you know, in the lives of uh, all of us who live here. Uh, so, you know, please uh, tell your folks about Real Talk Memphis. Uh, like, follow, share, subscribe. Uh, we are a podcast. So you can pick us up, you know, anytime after Tuesday when they post the show. So please do. Please uh, give it a listen. It's an hour worth your time. I think we try to do a decent job around here. So for all of us here at uh, Real Talk Memphis, we uh, wish you a happy and healthy and prosperous 2023. God bless you all. If the Lord says so, we'll be back here next week with another great show. Till then, take care, everybody.